My name is Casey and this is Evan. And thank you so much for joining us today as we talk now about how Automation API is used here internally at Bloomy. All right, so if you have stumbled onto this talk and you have missed Dan's talk about how Altana uses Automation API and you are wondering why you are here and uh, why you should care, that's all right. I'm gonna spend a quick minute uh, going over a quick recap of what Automation API is. But before I do that, uh, let's talk about a few scenarios you might find yourself when you are using Pulumi. For example, imagine you've got a Pulumi program, far reach, and you find yourself wishing that you had more visibility and tooling around it. So maybe in your developer workflow, you have some tests that you want to always run before you actually deploy your infrastructure or your deployment pipeline, you wanna be able to not use this CLI. I know Dan loves it, but uh, maybe you wanna be able to use a UI or ping it uh, with an API call. Or maybe your Plumi program is just not doing what you're expecting it to be doing. And you really wish you could step it through a debugger to actually see how this infrastructure is being spun up underneath the hood. And so for a lot of these things, there's your obvious heavyweight workarounds. You can add logs. Like Dan mentioned, you can write a bash script, which is you know everyone's favorite. We can write a whole service architecture on top of Pulumi, but these aren't particularly great developer experiences and we can do better. Other things that you might wanna do, you might wanna integrate with other tooling, right? You might want to roll out your Pulumi program across multiple stacks or alongside other workflows that aren't modeled using Pulumi. And what do you do then? Do you write even more bash scripts? All this to say, there's a lot of different ways you can package up your infrastructure code. And there's a lot of ways that overhead might be introduced when you're deploying that infrastructure. And since we love infrastructure as code, I, I hope, <laughs> since we love infrastructure as code, wouldn't it be great if we could use some of this overhead or move some of this overhead into code as well? And that is exactly what Automation API does. So what is Automation API? Watch me just read this off the slide here. Automation API is a strongly typed programmatic interface to run Pulumi programs without using the CLI. I see in the comment, no dinosaur suit. I actually was looking for it this morning and I have not cleaned my closet out and I got immediately scared. So sorry about that, uh, my quick aside. Um, so given this, what does that all mean? Here is a super simple skeleton of what Automation API usage looks like at its core. So we're here, we're setting up a new Pulumi program. We're defining our project name. We got our stack name. We got our Pulumi source code living in a GitHub repo. Then we have this method you'll see that's been commented where we want to either create the stack that doesn't exist or select it, right? Given the stack name we conjured up and it's called upsert stack remote source, remote source meaning that this repo actually lives remotely in a GitHub repo, right? It's not the only thing that Automation API supports. Automation API also supports having your source code live locally uh, on a local workspace folder or even in line in the program itself. And we'll touch on both of those bits in just a moment because it's actually pretty interesting. After we select our stack, we can also dynamically set our configuration. Then we can actually manage our Plumi up with the stack.up line right here at the very bottom. Um, and that's actually going to run our Plumi up code. And that is how you use Automation API in a nutshell. So that upsert remote stack uh, or upsert stack remote source uh, method I mentioned earlier, what's actually happening there? So you can see here, we have this concept of a workspace and a workspace just captures your state, right? It's gonna capture your runtime environment. It's gonna capture your Plumi config. It's gonna capture the source code itself, right? And here we have this version called a new local workspace. A local workspace here just means that we're gonna run Plumi up uh, on your local machine. So for this remote source scenario, what we're actually doing is we're cloning your GitHub repository under the temp directory uh, on your local machine, and then we're running Plumi up locally against that clone. So that is how Automation API is able to support remote repositories, but having being able to deploy it locally on whatever box you're running Automation API from. And that's kind of the gist of it. Ooh, did I tab this right? So <laughs> tie it all back together. How does Automation API solve some of those uh, scenarios that we discussed earlier? You can now manage the deployment process in code is pretty much the long and short of it. So your multi-stage pipeline uh, with all of your tooling uh, can all be managed from a single repository. And you can really layer on top of that Bloomy CLI as well to fit your custom use case however you like it. 
I also mentioned earlier that you can declare your Plumi program not just in a GitHub repo, but also in line in the same source as your deployment execution code, right? We're circling back to that now. And what this actually means is if you've got a snippet of your Plumi program that's giving you some difficulty, you can just like copy and paste that into some automation API code, run your automation API code from your IDE or from wherever, and actually use the debugger to step through your Plumi program and really break down what's happening. So that really gives you a lot more visibility into what is going on. So Evan, why should we use automation API? Well, great that you asked, Casey. Now, uh, from analyzing our internal usage data uh, across all Plumi users, looking at how many resources users are able to manage, how many engineers are working in each organization, we found a striking trend. Uh, organizations that go all in on automation API are able to manage 10 times the cloud footprint uh, as compared with traditional tools. Uh, so this means being able to scale your infrastructure and grow your infrastructure footprint exponentially without really having to grow your team much at all. But wouldn't it be nice if you didn't have to uh, build as much software to get there? Um, we've worked with industry leading customers uh, in, in SaaS and infrastructure to take the lessons that they've learned building on top of automation API and to build it into the Pulumi deployments platform, a set of tools that allows you to execute deployments and Pulumi operations, including Pulumi up through the, uh, the Pulumi service, fully managed so that you can scale up your deployments, concurrency, parallelism, without having to worry about the hardware that it runs on. Um, yes. Yeah, today we've announced Plumi deployments. And in addition to raw APIs, primitives, building blocks, um, REST APIs, we've also launched a turnkey workflow that is built on top of those APIs. Um, this includes click to deploy from the Plumi service console and get push to deploy so that you can open a PR, get previews, merge that PR, uh, have that deployment run automatically so that it's easy to set up a golden path into production with just a couple of clicks. And popping the hood a little bit, you know, all of this Plumi deployments is built on top of Automation API. Automation API sits at the core. So let's talk through what some of the layers are of the Plumi deployment system and what we did to turn Automation API into a hosted managed service that can run deployments on demand and how you might be able to do this inside of your platform. First, on the right, we have the Plumi workflow layer. The workflow layer is what provides our elastic, isolated, secure, single-use compute. Uh, this is where all of the Plumi programs end up running. Um, it's an abstraction that we manage, uh, measure latency, uh, keep a warm pool of, of compute ready to go uh, so that we can service uh, program requests quickly, instantaneously. Um, then the deployments layer in the middle. Uh, this is a service that actually runs the, that, 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 that manages the running of Plumi update operations. Um, so this adds RBAC, off, queuing, concurrency control, and logging on top of deployments and workflow. Finally, there's multiple different front ends that plug into the deployment service. There is the REST API that everything else is composed on top of that allows you to curl or send HTTP requests to create and run a deployment, refresh, operation, et cetera. Um, get push to deploy and click to deploy from the console. Both of those compose directly into the Plumi Deployments REST API. Uh, those experiences are built using the same logging APIs, uh, the same APIs uh, that show you deployment status, the same APIs that, um, that queue and run your deployments. And if we double click on what this looks like a little bit, here's a screenshot of a deployment running in the Plumi console. You can see that we have some logs here. Uh, and if you look closely, you have logs for deployment execution, uh, getting the source, downloading dependencies, and finally running the Plumi operation. You can see that each of these commands actually runs what is called the Plumi deploy executor. This is the brains of the operation 
a binary that builds on top of and builds in automation API. So this is a, a, a program that uh, imports automation API and has the ability to uh, run Pulumi operations, run operations through the Pulumi engine dynamically uh, based on configuration that we'd set um, and, and, and do things like acquire source on behalf of users, uh, do RBAC verification, all sorts of other things like that. And so if we go back to our architecture diagram, you can see that our workflow layer on the, on the uh, compute that, that runs our updates embeds the executor. So the executor is our automation API program. So the deployment, the deployment's REST API creates a, you know, a JSON payload that's passed along to our deployment service. Our deployment service is able to, uh, you know, once, once queued uh, and, and, you know, RBAC verification and everything else happens, it translates that deployment's payload into a workflow that the workflow service knows how to execute, uh, a, a list of jobs and steps that workflow executes. Uh, and, and once that gets scheduled on workflow, the workflow calls out to the Plumi deploy executor in order to clone, install dependencies, uh, and run the Plumi operation. So let's let's look a little bit at what uh, what some of this code might look like. Here's a um, help screen from the Plumi deploy executor. It's actually a, uh, a CLI that we've built um, that has some commands, um, some flags, some environment variables. Uh, but again, this is just another higher level program that we've built on top of Automation API to be able to embed the Pulumi engine and run deployments dynamically for you based on these REST API requests that we get. And to add on, as you can see, every one of these commands that you have available, these pretty much map directly to a stack, right? So all the things that you can do in Pulumi up, you destroy, you preview, re refresh. Uh, that's just what Pulumi Deploy Executor is wrapping around. So we want to take a closer look at what, for example, the update command is doing behind the scenes and how it's actually implemented. Uh, it looks like this. All right, so some of the terminology here might look a little familiar from what we saw earlier with the automation API code, right? We have the same concept of a workspace, which to recap, just captures your state and it bundles your configuration with your source code, et cetera, et cetera. And then there should also be a line of code in here that looks nearly identical to something we've seen before. And if you can't find it, here's a hit. <laughs> this stack.up is exactly what is Automation API uh, is doing. This is Automation API at work here. So to juxtaposition this with that Automation API code, that sample skeleton code we saw earlier, that last line stack.up is just how Automation API deploys your stack for you. So this Go binary, this Pulumi deploy executor is just a wrapper layer that has been built on top of Automation API. So as a quick recap, what is Pulumi deployments actually doing? As Evan mentioned, we have that front end layer, right? I'm gonna go in the opposite direction that he mentioned earlier. We have our front end layer, which is how you're gonna interface. You can click to deploy, you can get push deploy or integrate directly with that REST API. We then have our API layer where our queuing is managed and then how um, actually assigns that work to our workflow layer. And then that computation layer, we spin up that secure isolated compute instance to deploy your infrastructure. And then we have the executor that is just running through these little uh, binary steps. Uh, it clones, it installs your dependencies. And then that final bit, that Pulumi operation is just automation API. So at its core, Pulumi deployments is just a lot of infrastructure built on top of Automation API. And that's how the sausage gets made. And if you thought that was all, but wait, there's more. So if you remember this slide where I first went over what a local workspace was, uh, local workspace being a workspace that lives on your local machine, um, local workspace as a name kind of implies that there might also be something called a remote workspace, right? So what is a remote workspace, therefore. If a local workspace means that we're cloning the source code onto our local machine, and that enables a automation API to execute our Plumi up locally, then a remote workspace might mean that we're cloning that source code onto a remote box and then running the Plumi up from there. But cloning your source code onto a remote box and running it remotely just sounds like what Plumi Deployments is doing, right? 
So that's actually exactly what's happening. Uh, we are also have this new feature of remote deployments that's now supported by the Automation API, where rather than running your Pulumi program on your local machine, you can use Automation API to run it remotely. And it does this using Pulumi deployments. So we got this kind of sick circle of life here, right? Where you have Pulumi deployments, which uses Automation API in order to execute your Plumi up commands, your Plumi refreshes. And then Automation API uses Plumi deployments if you just want to execute that remotely. So it's all part of the same fabric and the same family and the same library. I'll now hand it back to Evan <laughs> uh, to tie everything back together in a neat little bow. Thanks, Casey. So, you know, Automation API is just another building block. Uh, and, and as you've seen, it's a building block that we at Pulumi use to build higher level software systems like Pulumi deployments. Uh, you know, today we dived into Pulumi deployments, a complex distributed system that's built on, on, on top of Automation API. And we saw some of the ways that Automation API can be embedded with common software practices and systems such as RBAC, managing compute, queuing, concurrency control, and many others just another piece of software that you can use to embed the Plumi engine. And you can too, or you can use Plumi deployments because we've already done a lot of the hard work. And all of this is to say, accomplish more with less. That's why we built Plumi deployments, uh, because we found that you know, customers that adopt Automation API are able to manage 10 times the infrastructure per engineer. Uh, this means being able to keep up with exponential cloud growth without having to uh, you know, explode the, the growth of your team uh, or put your engineers and operators under significant stress trying to keep up with that. Load. All right. Thank you all very much for joining us.